two, three, four times over the course of four to five years after college. So that was my classic example of when I was just burned out. I just needed a break. Good morning, jumping right into the studio. Cheers, everybody. Little pick me up, don't mind if I do. And yes, big topic today, huge topic. Overreaching, overtraining, and burnout for runners, all right? We runners, you know, we're driven people, okay? We have an itch that we gotta scratch, you know, usually every single day. It's just getting out the door, getting the endorphins going, getting the blood pumping, getting the sweat going. It's an amazing experience that we get to uh, put ourselves through, and I use those words very deliberately. We are making the choice, yes, to wake up at 4.30 a.m. or 5 a.m., even in the middle of the winter when there's a blizzard outside, put on the shoes, and get out the door. We're kind of abnormal, right? We're not, not too many people uh, choose to put themselves through this type of, yes, training and experience here on this earth. But, but, sometimes we can push a little too hard. You know, okay, what's my favorite lyric that I am, I'm always quoting here in the studio? Walk the line from Johnny Cash, right? We walk the line sometimes as runners where we dabble in overtraining, overreaching, and yes, sometimes even burnout, okay? So let's break it down. That is the focus. Oh yeah, yesterday's question of the day was all about what would you like me to talk about here in the studio? What are you interested in learning about around this topic? So thank you for taking the time to answer yesterday's question of the day, overreaching, overtraining, and burnout. Now let's start breaking them down, overreaching first. And for overreaching, what I often say here in the studio is calculated risks, which I talked about quite, quite a bit this past summer. Another way that you'll hear it talked about in the, uh, in the endurance sports world is functional overreaching, okay? That's important, functional overreaching, all right? Next up, overtraining. Um, and yes, sometimes we can fall into overtraining syndrome, but I gotta say that that is a very, very severe, very serious area to dabble in, um, to go into, and very few athletes actually get into that place where they're, it's, it's literally a syndrome that they repeatedly, over long periods of time, will overtrain and really beat themselves up, beat their bodies up, beat their minds up mentally to the point where um, they need to like, really, really seek out professional help. Um, so I just wanna make that, that distinction between overtraining and then overtraining syndrome. And point number three, burnout. It's just like it sounds where you are, you're mentally spent. You And it could be, yeah, obviously this can be applied to schoolwork, to your career, to a lot of different areas. Uh, but for endurance athletes, I'm going to talk about my experience with burnout once in my life. Um, I think just once ma a major burnout. I've probably had little ones along the way, but a major burnout that I had about 10 years ago. Now between overtraining and functional overreaching, the, the overtraining is the negative side, all right? Just make that distinction. And the functional overreaching is the positive side if done correctly. And that's an important distinction to make. I'm actually gonna take overtraining first and the signs that I know as a, a long distance runner when I am beginning to enter into overtraining or I might even already be into overtraining, okay? Point number one, it's really difficult to get out of bed in the morning. And I mean really difficult. Everything hurts. You don't feel like you're recovered, and that leads into it's hard to walk around my house. All right, that's 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 one one sign. Another sign, easy days, really easy days of jogging. I'm talking 9:30 pace, 10 minute pace, is a battle for me. Okay, and that's another sign. Another sign, the gym work, all the gym work that I do becomes like. Uh, 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 well, another word, a, a battle. It's, uh, it's really hard to do any of the functional work, any of the plyometrics in the gym. Okay, that's point number four. And thankfully, just a little side note, thankfully right now, I feel pretty darn good in the gym. Like the, the sled work, the um, uh, all the work that I'm doing, the band work, um, anyway. So that's point number four. Another sign of overtraining for me as a long distance runner is it's hard to fall asleep. And I'm not talking about sleepy tired. I'm talking about the body is so tired. I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but that is another sign that 
I have pushed too hard and I've, I've pushed my training too hard, okay? And last but not least, the most obvious sign of overtraining for runners is a drop off in performance during FKTs uh, in 2020 especially or in racing, okay? So either where you're just, you're fit, you're incredibly fit, your heart rate is low, uh, you know that you're fit. Your workouts have gone well up into a point, but then you arrive at the starting line and you tank. Like you're, you just cannot push yourself during a race or an FKT. So that's the most obvious and classic sign of overtraining happening. Now moving from that overtraining side to the functional overreaching, what I call the calculated risks. All right, here we go. So. Uh, it's, a, it's a kind of an interesting phraseology that you'll hear in endurance sports, but that functional overreaching. Um, I guess I'm going to start with a couple points of this is if I was a coach and I was coaching an athlete, these are some points that I would consider before ever, cons before ever considering for that athlete that they can do functional overreaching or taking some calculated risks in their training. Okay, point number one, of course, is a great beautiful, I'm going to say large aerobic base, meaning they have been training for long periods of time, healthy, of course, and we'll come to that in a second, uh, but their aerobic base is built. Uh, remember the bottom of the pyramid, the bigger the base at the bottom of the pyramid, the bigger the peak will be at the end of the training block. Okay. So that big aerobic base is point number one, of course, a healthy athlete. And I mean, over the long term. So what is their injury history? Have they had a lot of injury, you know, especially, you know, for me in my past with stress fractures, a lot of stress fractures, that's a big, big concern, you know, let's for me 10 years ago. So, and last but not least, what's the end goal? What's the A race that this athlete is aspiring to? Okay. Is it a B race? Is it a C race? Is it a tune up race? Or is it an actual A race, which for me as a coach would warrant the decision, okay, we can do calculated risks, AKA some functional overreach reaching um, at the right time in the training block. Okay. Not too early, maybe not in the middle, not too late. And that's always, a, that's always um, from athlete to athlete. It's going to be different. Um, when can you insert functional overreaching into the training block? Now, a basic definition of calculated risk, functional overreaching is when you increase your training, either the intensity of the training, the volume of the training, uh, but not over a long period of time. Okay, this is not over an entire training block. This is at the right time uh, for the given athlete, what, depending on what their A goal race is going to be. Um, so for an example would be going from, let's say you're accustomed to one interval training session every seven days, bumping that up to at least two and maybe even three interval training sessions over the course of seven days. Another way to, to look at it would be, and I do this you know, quite often in my training, is doing back-to-back -back hard days if you've never been doing back-to-back -back hard days. If you always go hard, easy, hard, or hard, easy, medium, hard. So this would be eliminating those easy days in the middle and going back to back hard days. And I mean, you know, pretty high, like hard, hard, okay? And another example is increasing the volume of your training. Uh, let's say holding it for two weeks, maybe three weeks, where you go from, uh, let's say you're, you've been training consistently for 60 to 70 miles a week and you bump it up for two weeks to 85 miles a week, okay? A calculated risk. And again, keeping in mind an athlete's injury history. And just to be real clear, again, the functional overreaching is the positive side where you're pushing the body over the short term. And it can be anywhere from that 10 day window to two weeks, maybe three weeks, depending again on the athlete and when the A goal race is going to happen. Rarely have I seen a functional overreaching be successful where it's pushed for more than three weeks. Because again, it all depends on the situation and how much rest, and we're gonna talk about rest in a second. Um, if you're pushing the functional overreaching for too long, the calculated risks for too long, that can begin to start to look like overtraining if you're not getting the adequate rest. All right. So, um, it's walking the line. It's knowing it's of course, always listening to the body, listening to again, those signs inside the house when it's hard to get out of bed. And last but not least burnout. It's probably the easiest to understand on the mental side for me. Uh, burnout is when you look at your running shoes and this is a real world. You look at your running shoes and you're just like, nah, nah, I'm done. 
put a put a fork in me. I'm done. Like I don't want to. I don't want to put the shoes on. Now this is different than being just you know lazy and just being like I don't want to run today because it's cold out. This is where it's a like you look at the shoes or you look at your watch and you're just like you know what I need to chill out. I need a mental break from lacing up the shoes every day. And that's why I'm a huge advocate of taking a, a good break, a substantial break, at least once a year. For me, that's around Christmas time, you know, at least two weeks, sometimes three weeks. I mean, guys, the best marathon runners in the world, now they're obviously training at a high level. They take a month off after their big marathon races, okay? They, you know, and I'm talking about the elites, but so we as, you know, the amateurs around the world, the aspiring runners, we can take breaks and come back just as strong, if not stronger, especially on the mental side. For me, after the University of Colorado, I knew that I needed a mental break from high, not, not the training, I love the training, from the high intensity desire inside my brain to win a national championship. Not personally, as a team. I was so driven and focused on helping the team win national championships at the University of Colorado for, it's my, it was on, it's like, it's like my obsession to win national championships as a team that I, I, I needed a break. And so that's why everyone, I took four years, five years of very simple running. I think I raced two, three, four times over the course of four to five years after college. So that was my classic example of when I was just burned out. I just needed a break. And so I took it four to five years off. And here I am as a 35 year old trying to uh, chase down dreams, but feeling like my fire is really ignited right now. Um, I think because I didn't go straight from college to 115 miles a week like I'm running right now as a 35 year old. Now there's a quote out there, you've probably heard it before, there's no such thing as overtraining, just under recovery. And that's a fun quote, I love that quote. I don't agree with it completely, but it is a very fun quote to think about, like wow, I can train 10% harder, 15% harder, and maybe I can survive and thrive if I'm sleeping you know, I'll just say 10% more, 15% more. But I think there's a, again, it's that line that, um, it's a, I, I love the quote, but I'm, I'm not fully bought into that idea that you can, let's say, out sleep over training. I don't believe that at all, okay? And I'm also always saying in the studio, why, you know, and this is why I do love posting on Strava and just throwing like ridiculous curveballs at, I'll just say, all of you. And I get some really, um, not negative comments, but kind of just comments like, Seth, why are you running 9.30 pace? And that's why, 9.30 a mile. And that's why I say, easy days easy, hard days hard. I go run, you know, 15 to 20 miles up 14,000 foot mountains, and the next day I'm running a three mile loop here in Denver um, at nine minute pace, okay? So easy days easy, hard days hard. It's that distribution of work load in your monthly training, your weekly training, um, and yes, your entire training block where you have the volume of training versus the intensity versus the amount of recovery that you're putting into your daily living. And this is, oh, this is hard because I know you're all working full time or going to school full time. And it's like, when do I have the time to rest? Now, I hope that helps. Okay. Functional overreaching, overtraining and then burnout. Okay, those three areas to consider as an athlete for you or if you're a coach out there, um, when to take those calculated risks, when to back off a ton, when the athlete is just showing signs like I'm done, I need a break, I need a mental break, I need to, you know, I need to throw my shoes into the corner and not look at them for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, maybe even longer, okay? Um, so I hope that spells it out a little bit for all of you and um, gosh, it's, it's, it's fun. It's exciting because as athletes, we have the opportunity to push ourselves and to take those risks. But it's, uh, it's again, it comes down to walking the line, listening to the body. And for me, all right, the Azores in a month and a half, if I actually get the FKT, if I'm allowed to go to Portugal, I know after a four day stage race, done. I'm going to be done physically and probably even a little bit mentally as well. And so that'll be a, a great opportunity to avoid burnout, avoid overtraining, and just 
rest. Okay, so that's my game plan. We'll see if it plays out um, as I hope it will, but that's why we just we, we keep getting out the door every single morning because we don't know what is around the corner in our training exactly, or sorry, I should say in our racing exactly in 2020. Question of the day, what has been your experience now that you have some working definitions, again, of functional overreaching, overtraining, and burnout, what has been in your experience with all three of these, one of these, or none of these? Maybe you've never dabbled in any of them, um, and maybe you're just learning about these topics for the first time. I guarantee there's gonna be some good insights down below in the comments. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. I know that was a lot. One more time, functional overreaching, overtraining, and burnout. Thanks for being here, thanks for watching. We will toss it back to Oh my goodness. Oh man. Oh man. Well, we'll toss it back to a recovery vlog where I talk about how I recover as a runner, how I recover as a runner right there, right there. See beauty, work hard and love each other. See you tomorrow.